Hi everyone, my name's Izzy and I'm a customer success consultant in the pre-sales team at Esri UK. Today I'm going to be taking you through the process of creating habitat classifications using the wizard classification tool in ArcGIS Pro. So what exactly is image classification? It's the process of assigning predefined classes, usually related to land cover or land use, to every pixel in a remotely sensed image. The output of this process can then be used to create thematic maps. The benefit of this tool for habitat classification specifically is that it allows us to monitor how habitats are changing over time, to see whether they're thriving or to see if they're at risk. The first thing we're going to do is open a project in ArcGIS Pro. We're then going to navigate to the catalogue pane and add a new folder connection containing our aerial imagery. We're then going to load this imagery onto our map. Today I've decided to use 25cm resolution imagery from Blue Sky, however there are more detailed aerial imagery resolutions available, such as 12.5cm. Here you can see a slight difference between the clarity of the images. 12.5cm resolution imagery could supply more benefits with this type of classification in terms of the accuracy of the habitats identified. However, processing times may be increased compared to lower resolution imagery. For this demonstration, I'll be using the 25cm resolution. The next step is to choose your area of interest. You may already have a polygon area for this, however, I'll be using the title info polygons to choose my area of interest. If necessary, you can use the select tool, which is found when navigating to map on the top ribbon, and you can use these to select the polygons you're interested in and save this as a new selection. After this, I'm going to navigate to the analysis tab in the ribbon and select tools. I'm then going to search for the dissolve tool and use this to get rid of any unwanted boundaries and create one polygon. I'm then going to be using the extract by mask tool to gain a clearer view of my imagery for my area of interest. When your extract has been created, you can then navigate to raster layer and change the stretch type of your extract. I'm going to choose minimum maximum as this best represents my aerial imagery. Now that we have the imagery extract for our area of interest, we can begin to use the wizard classification tool. We're going to navigate to the imagery tab on the top ribbon and select the wizard classification tool. Before diving in, it's important to note that there are two main methods to classification. The first one is supervised. This type of classification uses training samples or pixels with known class labels to train a classification algorithm. These samples help the algorithm learn the spectral characteristics of different classes. Once trained, the algorithm assigns classes to the remaining pixels based on their spectral properties. So it's like having a teacher guide the algorithm. Supervised classification is great when you have labelled data and want precise results. We then have unsupervised classification, and this doesn't require training samples. Instead, it groups pixels with similar spectral properties into clusters or classes. The user can then interpret these classes after the classification process, so it's like discovering hidden patterns in the data. Unsupervised classification is useful when you're exploring unknown data or need a broader view of the landscape. But for the classification we're doing today, we're going to be selecting unsupervised. There are also two types of image classification, pixel-based and object-based. With object-based classification, this is an approach that considers not only individual pixels, but also spatial patterns and context. It groups pi pixels into objects or segments based on their spatial relationship and spectral properties. Object-based classification is excellent for capturing complex features and minimising noise. With pixel-based classification, we assign classes directly to individual pixels based solely on their spectral values. It's like looking at each pixel in isolation without considering its neighbours. This type of classification is straightforward but may miss spatial context. For example, this is what an object-based classification looks like and this is what a pixel-based classification looks like. Today, we'll be using the object-based classification method. If you don't have a predetermined schema, which is a set of habitat classes, you can start with the default schema. You can then later modify this to fit your specific needs. 
In this next step, you can segment your imagery. You're able to alter both the spatial and spectral detail of your imagery. The higher you put the value, the more detailed your classification is likely to be. I've found that I get better results with a higher spectral and spatial detail value, but it can vary. The next step is crucial. You'll be creating classes based on your spectral properties. It's good to experiment with the number of classes that you need. Too many or too few can affect the accuracy. I'd aim for slightly more classes than you actually need. Depending on your needs, you could range from five classifications to well over 100, but for this demonstration, I'm going to be aiming for around seven or eight different classifications, so we'll change my value to 10. Once you're happy with the classifications, you can then click Run, and another raster layer will appear with your newly created classes. Using the Assign tool, you can now assign classes based on your schema. You can edit schema properties such as renaming classes, tweaking colours or tweaking labels. You can then save this schema, as this will come in handy for when you're performing supervised classifications in the future. When assigning classes, select the class that best represents each habitat. In the next step, you're able to reclassify any areas that you deem inaccurate. Whilst it's unlikely that you need to use this for an unsupervised classification, I can see a section of my area that's been misclassified as water. Using the Reclassify Within a Region tool, I can highlight this area and change it to the correct habitat classification. Once you're happy, you can then finish the Wizard Classification tool and you're left with a raster layer highlighting your classified habitats. Another great feature is that you can use a chart element to further highlight and display the data in a more user-friendly way. Here, I can see more clearly the distribution and density of my habitats within my area of interest. This is a great tool to use when looking to define these habitats and provides the ability for them to be monitored more intricately over time. Its more detailed benefits are that it helps us monitor and encourage ecosystem balance as understanding habitats allows site managers to ensure the health of ecosystems and their associated species. It also helps with the preservation of important habitats. Classification helps us identify and protect vital habitats such as wetlands, forests or grasslands, and this supports diverse wildlife. It can also be great for managing the climate resilience of a habitat, as well as water quality and disease control. Overall, unsupervised classifications are a great way to generate your own schema for future extractions. It should only really be applied to multispectral imagery and where land cover can be clearly classified by using only spectral information. Thank you for watching and I hope this helps with your habitat classifications.